Hey everyone, Nathan from Elegant Themes here. In this tutorial, I'm gonna walk you through the Extra Theme Customizer. The Theme Customizer is a set of literally hundreds of controls that allow you to edit just about every global aspect of your theme styling without ever having to touch a line of code. So to get the Theme Customizer, you're gonna to wanna to navigate in your WordPress admin to Extra Theme Customizer. With Extra, you have 10 options here in the initial sidebar menu, each controlling a different area or aspect of your website styling. Some of these menu options, such as general settings or header navigation settings or footer settings, go several menu layers deep, each with multiple settings options for you to customize. Understandably, some find the sheer quantity of available settings a bit daunting. That's why in this video, I'm gonna help you get acquainted with each section by running through all of the 10 sidebar options and showing you what they control. So let's start with general settings. Here we have layout settings, typography settings, and background settings. In layout, I'm able to enable a box layout for my website. I can change the website content width. I can change the website gutter width. I can also change the sidebar width. I can also change the global accent color. And so this will be any time that I have a page, uh, for instance, it'll change these and it'll also change um, this little border up here at the top for um, posts and pages. Next I have uh, typography settings. I can adjust the body size of my fonts or my text. I can change the body line height. I can adjust the heading font style, heading font, body font, and then the body link color, body text color, body text or heading text color, and archive heading text color, all without touching any code. Okay, so finally we have background settings. And in background settings, there's only two here. So one is stretch background image, and I'll actually, uh, I don't have an image uploaded yet, but I'll show you what this will do later. Um, background color is pretty self-explanatory. It's this color right here. And I can change that simply by opening up this option and either mousing around here to find a color or choosing something that's predefined. Okay. Our next main option here is header and navigation settings. Under header and navigation settings, I have the header format settings. And it's here that I can choose uh, if I wanna be left, right, or centered. So this is an example of the centered and that's left, right again. I can also choose to hide this navigation until scroll. Next up is the primary menu bar settings, and that is this menu bar right here. I can choose to make it full width. I can choose to hide the logo image. I can choose to change the menu height. And just so you know, you've probably seen me clicking these arrows quite a bit. These arrows, anytime you hit this, this will automatically take you back to your default setting. So I can change the logo height. I can change the text size, the letter spacing. I can also adjust the font, the font style, text color, hover and active link color, the background color, drop down menu background color, uh, drop down menu line color, I can adjust the drop down menu text color as well as the drop down menu hover slash active link color. I can also choose, and this is really a cool feature of extra, the menu animation. So right now I have my menus flipping in vertically. Get that nice flip in action. But there's several options here. I can have it fade in, fade in from top, fade in from right, bottom, left. I can have it scale in from right, scale in from left, scale in from center. I can flip it horizontally, vertically. Um, I can also slide it vertically and horizontally. There's just so many options here for you to choose from. Okay, and our next header and navigation setting is the secondary menu bar settings, and that's gonna be this top bar up here. So I can choose to make that full width. I can change, I can change its text size. I can change its letter spacing. I can change the font the font style, I can adjust the background color, text color, hover slash active link color, drop down menu background color, drop down menu text color, I can adjust the drop down menu hover and active link color, 
Um, I can also adjust the drop down menu animation with all those same uh, animations I had at my disposal for the other menu. And I can change the trending text size, which is right here. Can adjust the trending font. I can adjust the trending font style, the label text color, trending title text color. Um, I can also adjust the search cart and icon text size. So that'll be right up here. All with just a slide or by entering in a number here in the number field. And I can change the search and cart font, the style of that font, as well as its color and uh, the search cart and icon text color here as well. Oh, the background color is what I meant as well. Okay, uh, let's go back one menu and let's talk about the fixed navigation settings. So what do we mean when we say fixed navigation? Uh, we get this question a lot. All this means is that when you scroll down, you see how the menu fixes to the top? That That is the fixed menu, uh, fixed navigation settings um, that controls the menu appearance while it's in this mode. So I can choose to hide the logo image. I can choose to change the menu height, change the logo height, change the text size, text color, active link color, and the background color. So what's cool about this is this actually changes the look, but only upon that scroll. So it look one way here, and then when it becomes the fixed width, or sorry, the fixed navigation rather, um, it'll change appearance. All right, so finally we have header element settings. And this is where I can choose to show social icon, search bar, trending bar, or WooCommerce cart. So if I start turning these items off, things become a bit more uh, minimal. Okay, so that was the header and navigation settings. Next we have the footer settings. So I'll scroll down here to the footer. So in footer we have layout, typography, footer elements, and bottom bar. So in layout, we can adjust how many widgetized areas make up the layout of the footer. So currently it's set at three. I can change that to four, two, one, or two, but with a different um, layout there. I'll go ahead and keep mine at three. And on typography, I can change the heading text size. I can change the heading font style, the body link slash text size. Uh, body link line height, body link font style. I can also change the widget text color, the widget link color, the widget heading color, and the widget bullet color. Okay, going back, let's check out footer elements. So this is where I can choose to show or not show the social icons in the bottom. And finally we have bottom bar. So on the bottom bar, I can change the background color. I can adjust the footer credit text color. I can change the footer credit font style and the footer credit text size. I can also change the footer menu link color as well as the footer menu active link color. I can change the letter spacing, uh, the text size, the font style, and the social icon size. I can also change the social icons color. All right, so that is the footer settings. Next up, we have buttons. So let me find a page here where there's plenty of buttons for us to look at. So on this page, you can see that there's plenty of read more buttons for us to look at. And if I go into the buttons menu, I can change the button style. So I can adjust the text size, the text color, the background color. I can change the border width as well as the border color. I can change the border radius, the letter spacing, the font style, and of course the font itself. And then below that we have the button hover styles. And the button hover styles is the styling of the button when the mouse is hovering over it. Here again, I can, t I can adjust the text size, text color, background color, border width, border color, border radius, letter spacing, and font style. Okay, so those are the button settings. Let's move on to social networks. Within social networks here, um, I have the ability to go ahead and add my credentials to all of these possible social networks. 
And when I do, they will appear where I have social icons activated in the uh, secondary menu and in the footer. So because this is just an example site, I am only putting pound signs in here just to get the icons to show up. But obviously you could go through here and you could add your credentials to a huge number of social sites and really make sure that um, you're connected on um, all the sites, all the social networks and platforms that matter the most to you and your website, your audience. Okay, so next up is site identity. So site identity is basically just where you can add your site title um, and your tagline, as well as your site icon, which will appear in the um, in the tab on whatever browser you're using, whether that's Chrome or Safari, um, etc. Firefox. Also known as the favicon. Okay, so next up we have background image. So right now we don't have a background image selected. And so it looks like this is a kind of a blank panel. But if we go ahead and select an image, we'll actually see that there's a lot of options available to us. So once I added this image, I see that there's the option for uh, the background to repeat. Say no repeat, center, and let's try fixed. Okay, I think I like that a little bit better. So here we have a new background, background image. And as I said before, and the general settings, background settings, there's an option to stretch background image. Now, this image actually goes all the way across just fine, but if it didn't, that's what this would come in handy for. All right, so that's background settings. So let's go ahead and jump over to menus. All right, so within the menus, uh, we have menu locations, and we can adjust. So we have primary menu, which is this menu right here. Um, secondary menu, which is this menu here. So currently my blog menu is set to my primary and I can change that here by clicking on that. I can reorder all of these elements simply by dragging and dropping them. I can add items here. I can also change the location by checking a different um, box down here in these options. Same for my main pages menu. I can also choose to add a new menu, give it a name, and when I create the menu, I'll be given the option to add items here, or to, and or uh, select a menu location. I can also delete the menu. All right, so that is menus. Finally, we have widgets. In the widgets, we can uh, add or subtract widgets from all of our sidebars here, or widgetized areas. So I can add or subtract from my main sidebar, footer sidebar, um, footer middle, uh, inactive footer sidebar, and footer sidebar right. And finally, we have static front page. Um, here I'm able to um, decide whether I want my latest post, static front page, or an extra layout. So right now, it's actually showing your latest post, but because I have this setting configured for um, extra category layout in um, settings reading, um, I'm, going, I'm getting a layout here right now. You can change it here, um, but you can also change it in settings reading. Okay, well that's all for this video. This has been an overview of Extras Theme Customizer. If you have any questions about what we've gone over in this video, feel free to leave us a comment and we'll make sure you get a response. If you're interested in learning more about Extra or seeing what else it's capable of, you can click the View Demo button. If you're interested in seeing more Extra tutorials, click the Subscribe button and never miss a great post. Thanks for watching.